I am Agustín Canapino from Argentina. I am driving the car number 78 uh, for Junco's Honeywell Racing. I started to racing in the motorsport when I was 15 years old. Always in a touring cars, I never drove a karting and open wheel before, so this is my first year with an open wheel car. I won my first championship in 2007, oh, a long time ago. It was a, a promotional category with a touring cars, named Copa Megan or Megan Cup. It was my first complete year because when I, when I was 15 and 16, I compete but not the world year. The first time I compete the, the entire season, I won the championship and it was my first uh, full experience like a driver. The first time that I met Agustin was in Argentina in 2017. It was a TC race in Argentina where he was obviously competing. I was the top class there and he leading the championship. And I remember he was very kind to show me everything inside the car and how the car was built and the engine and the suspension and, and the team and how they work and how they operate and all that. That's why we became kind of friends in a way. And then 2018, I flew to Argentina many times and those are the years that we did 12 races in IndyCar. Everything started uh, on 2019 when I was driver for Juncos, for Ricardo, in the 24 hours. And then uh, we decided to do the crazy 24 hours of Daytona with four drivers, and I offered to Agustin to be one of the four drivers. That was a very, the first time that we did something together. After that situation, Ricardo wanted to, to do me the possibility to, to try to test the IndyCar car. At that time, with his dad, we said, we have to put him on IndyCar, we have to just do one test day. So we were trying during 2019 to make it happen. At that time, we were part-time team. We only did two races with Kyle Kaiser, the famous uh, the race that in Indy 500, where we barely made it and left Alonso outside the race. That year, we only did two races. And then, uh, unfortunately, we could not put together the test day for Agustin. And four years later, you know, it took us to, to make it happen. Agustin jumped in the car and, and really, really fly. And I saw, okay, what I saw in, in Daytona in 2019 is, is real, it was real and this, is, this guy is, is special and I think he has the, the talent and all the condition that IndyCar drivers need to, to be successful in, in such a difficult category. We are here and I'm really, really grateful for Ricardo to give me this opportunity. Uh, everything started honestly in 2019 when I drove for uh, the project of Daytona 24. The NTT IndyCar Series is back in Canada. No, I don't want them. I mean, like... <laughs> I'm trying to give them to you. Uh, I fir first met Augustine when he came to the shop in January of uh, this year, 23. Um, first met him, quite hard to communicate with him. Obviously, the language barrier was uh, something that we had to deal with off the bat. But you could tell he was a he was a race car driver. He was a professional driver, and he wanted wanted to learn about how everything worked and what he was going to be uh, provided with. Yeah. So from uh, when he first came over and we talked to him at the shop, um, he's starting to be to understand what he wants out of the car, how to feel in the car, what makes him comfortable in the car. You know, he's just adapting to it, and he's now learning what he needs to have to be able to do well. In October last year, he did not speak English. And then by January, February, when we started the championship, he started talking in English, do some conference in English. And today, is, you can see every day that goes by, he's speaking better and better, and, and same with the ability to drive the car. So I think today is an even better driver, like it was before coming to IndyCar, better human being in a way, because he's speaking English, now he knows a little bit of everything on 
base of the culture and the system that the United States can, can offer as a country, which is totally different. One of his strengths is just adapting to all the new tracks and circuits he's going to. Um, give him 20 laps at a circuit he's never been, and he's a few tenths off the pace of guys that have been doing it for years. Um, so I'd say one of his uh, main skills is adapting to to everything that's new around him. And, and this is just the beginning. We are in the middle of the season yet, so I think he will continue growing as well as, as we continue going. And hopefully we can, we can have more Agustin with us for the future and, and we will see him how he will perform on the highest level as, as we continue going. I'm very excited about the opportunity to do another street courses because at the moment so far, St. P12, uh, Detroit uh, 14 in Long Beach, I was leading a lap. So it, probably the street courses for a team is a good place to do a, a good job. The car uh, so far is, is good on the street courses, especially on the race pace. And the other thing I am really excited is to, to know a new country. I never been in Canada before, Canada. <laughs> and I am very happy with this situation, this opportunity to know a new country for me. Uh, this weekend in Toronto, I'm hoping we can uh, have a good, good qualifying effort. Hopefully, top 15 or something. We ran pretty good here last year with the single car team. So, uh, qualified top 15 or something, and just have a consistent race. See if we can get a finish ahead of that. Um, you know, St. Pete in Long Beach, two street courses. St. Pete, we had a decent finish in Long Beach not as good so i think uh for being here at street course anything within the top 15 will be good for us now it's raining so everything is changed it's with my my first time with rain in an open wheel car in the car too so i will take with a lot of calm because it's really easy to do a mistake and destroy the car so in the dry condition i was not bad badly for a top 20 so now i am I want to have a little bit of time of relax. Every racetrack is different, even street course to another street course are different. But I feel like last year we were super fast and since last year to today, we develop even more things on suspension and, and shock absorbers, dampers, which is a open area on IndyCar, which all the teams can make a big difference on those areas. And I think we, we improve a little bit there as well. So I'm looking forward for a, actually a, a good weekend at Toronto because, uh, like I said, last year we were fast. And if we just can carry on the same momentum that we had last year, I think we can be, can be good for us. But you never know in IndyCar, you, you know how how difficult and tight it is, and obviously teams are improving as well. So we are not the only one improving, so everybody improves, and some of them improve even more than others. Dejadlo pasar a Rossi, pica y siete segundos atrás, tenemos que salvar gasolina lo más que pueda. Vamos, vamos, perdón, perdón. Gracias, gracias. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Vamos. Thank you guys. Speed well guys, really good job guys. Well done. Out of fuel now, corner three. Well done guys. My goal to the final part of the season is continue my improvement. I want to continue my improvement um, and have the opportunity to, to have another season because I need another season to start to show how I can do because uh, so far really good, but I want more. I, I am here to, to, to win. I want to win. I want to battle for the top, uh, with the top guys, with the top teams, uh, try to to, to help to the team to grow, uh, to grow and to improve during the, the seasons, during their years. And I want to, to be here for a long time. This is my goal, try to show how I can do, but I need time. I need time, I need laps, 
and my goal for the final part of the season is continue this improvement. I am much close to Ancalum, I am really close to him. He's a really, really good driver. I'm learned a lot from him. I think we, we are doing a good job like a teammate. And this is my, my objective for the last part of the season.